I hope the world ends in my lifetime. I want to see it. I don't want it to end tonight. And I know the hand that I was dealt. When shit hits the fan, I don't make good decisions. I die hour one. We need to go north. I don't know where north is. I'm going to stay here, guys. Dead. Some of you, you're going to survive for a while. Good for you. Sizing people up as quick as you can. Do you know how to fly a plane? No? Knife to the throat. Out of my way. You're useless. That's what I've learned from watching movies. If anybody ever comes running up to you screaming, do you know how to fly a plane? Muster up some courage in a hurry. Yep. <laughs> Nobody screaming, do you know how to fly a plane, doesn't have horrible things happening right behind them. Just jump in that cockpit, just start flipping switches. Calm down, my plane's a little different. <laughs> have you out of here in no time. Does this have a mirror? No? Okay, that was a joke. Haha. <laughs> That's how you survive a little bit longer. I watch any TV show with Alaska in the title just so I can see what a real man is supposed to look like. Or Bear Grylls, I love him. A British Green Beret giving us survival tactics while we sit on the couch and snack. Come on, who's that show for? I can rule out half the planet. I don't know a woman that can do one pull-up, let alone climb a vine up a waterfall to eat a bat. Yeah, heads up, ladies, you're going to die at the bottom. I'm going up there to eat bat. Do you know how to eat a bat? I saw this episode. I'll tell you, it's not as hard as you think. First thing you have to do, catch a fucking bat. I'm out. Catch a bat? Yeah, I can't kill a fly in under three hours in my house with equipment. You want me to blindly walk into a scary cave and barehand a flying AIDS rat? That's literally all he does. He just walks in and just snatches it by the feet or hooves, whatever the fuck bats have. And close your eyes, PETA. Here comes the tough part. Then he just bashes it over a rock because he wants his snack tender. Meanwhile, his camera crew's just laughing, eating Luna bars. Like, what the fuck is wrong with him? Doesn't this stinky Brit realize American reality television is fake? We can pause the camera and put granola and pudding down and be like, you have to eat your bat to survive. He's chewing on a real bat. He's like, uh-oh, this could be a poisonous bat. The fuck did you just say? It's 11.30 at night. I'm trying to go to bed. Now I have to get up and Google what bats are edible. If there's a faint yellow diamond under the left eye, be wary. I'm looking at women that aren't laughing. My guess is you're hung up on the part where I said you can't do a pull-up and you checked out. I can do a pull-up. Yeah, and there's a reason you're here alone. Your shoulders are gross and nobody likes you. You should knock it off with a CrossFit. Nobody needs to flip a tire in 2015. We all have AAA. You haven't had your period in four years for a reason. You're growing a dick. Now, now lighten up. May I open the door for you? Nope, I've got it. Woman. You're the superior sex. I don't care. You ever get road rage? That's embarrassing. I've had road rage before and won, and I've had road rage and lost. I'm going to tell you two different stories. You can determine which is which. And the first one I want to point out, I was pretty young at the time. And the only reason I want you to know that is because I don't approve of what I said. But I had just moved out here to Los Angeles. I was in traffic in my Acura with the sunroof open. Yeah, I was doing pretty well from day one. Started from the upper middle-ish, now I'm here. I was yelling through my sunroof at a guy in a delivery truck and I don't remember what we were fighting over. But at one point, I may have yelled, that's why you have to work on Saturday, you piece of shit. And then he spit a mouthful of Doritos onto me. <laughs> so I lost. Right? If a man spits a mouthful of Doritos on your face, you have two options. You can, one, get a machete and murder everyone in his family. Or two, you can close your sunroof because that psycho is not bluffing. I had chewed up Dorito on my lip. I can still feel it right now. 
I didn't have any napkins in my glove compartment. That was over 15 years ago. You think there's napkins in my glove compartment today? You're goddamn right there is. Every time I go to a restaurant, I take a big fuck you to the environment stack. And they're like, hey, don't take so many napkins. I'm like, I had chewed up Dorito from another man on my face. Now, here's a time more recently that I had road rage. I think I handled things a little more maturely. Again, I was in Los Angeles. I was on the 10 freeway eastbound, middle lane. Don't know what that says about my personality, but that's where you'll find me. I'm not an aggressive driver. I drive a station wagon. I was doing nothing wrong. I saw a car changing lanes, driving like a maniac, cutting people off. He was coming toward me. He wanted me to get out of the way. I chose not to. I'm like, fuck it, slam into me. He didn't. But he got on my bumper and he was irritating. He was flipping me off. I noticed he has a wedding ring on and his wife's in the front seat. And at that moment, no, I got real confident. Because I'm like, there's no way you're going to go to the level of crazy that I'm about to. Not with your wife sitting next to you. Like at some point, she's going to have to be the voice of reason. Like, stop it, Philip. Just drive. I'm scared. So I got real brave. Right? I'm flipping them off. I'm brake checking. I'm holding the windshield wiper fluid on. Like, <laughs> is that your move? Yeah. A very passive aggressive. I've cleared my calendar. I'm doing nothing for the rest of my life except irritating this asshole behind me. We're going about 10 miles an hour on the freeway at this point, and he won't pass me. I kind of respect it. I'm out of fluid. My exit's coming up. So I get off the freeway, and then he follows me right off the freeway. And at that moment, the real Daniel came crashing back, where I'm like, oh, shit. You were supposed to keep driving. That's not your wife. That's a hooker. You're going to murder, isn't it? Like, you got to think fast. What do you do? Well, I know this exit. It's Robertson exit, if you want to verify it. There's a very large black homeless guy at the bottom with a sign that just said food. I aggressively drove toward him with this guy right on my bumper, slammed on my brakes to a dead stop so he's pinned behind me, can't get around. I roll my window down. I give the guy $20. I say, you need to go crazy on the car behind me. <laughs> I swear, he doesn't even hesitate. Both hands on the hood, cocks his head, starts screaming at the guy. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh shit, he's going to murder him too. <laughs> now I got blood on my hands, but I don't really care because it's a homeless guy. I'm like, it's probably not even the worst decision he's made today. So I take off, and the driver shoots me one last look, and I appreciate it because he certainly didn't have to, but he gave me the, uh, you won. <laughs> and I've never felt better about anything I've ever done in my entire life. You know for the rest of his life, every time he gets in the car with his wife, she's going to be like, you remember the one time with the homeless guy, man? Maybe I should drive. That's all I'm saying, hothead. So remember that next time you lose your cool behind the wheel. Calm down. Find a homeless person. Pay them to do it for you. Way safer, and you feel good about yourself. And the only part of that story I embellished even the slightest bit was the amount of money that I gave him. Because if you think I'm giving out 20s, you're fucking crazier than he was. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>